In this video, we answer a question from one of our viewers. Mahmood writes, Hi mate, I just discovered your channel about a week ago and have been watching pretty much every tutorial you provide about luminosity mask, U-range mask, exposure blending, and everything related to it. Super happy to have you teaching us and I'm really enjoying it. However, I still have one question. Is it possible to blend more than two exposures? Like blending overexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed photos for landscape photography? Thanks. Well, Mahmood, that's a great question. I'm glad you can see the benefits of exposure blending. And since you're not the only one with this question, I'm happy to run through it for those with similar questions. While blending three images is much more complicated than two, the process is essentially the same. To show the workflow, I'll use this set of raw images which I shot handheld with just an iPhone using our partner app, Aura HDR. Definitely check that out if you want to take raw HDR brackets on your iPhone. Here is the first bracket underexposed by two stops. Here is the second bracket overexposed by two stops. And here is the properly exposed bracket. Before taking the shot, a good question to ask is, do we need to use all the brackets? The reason being, sometimes when using full frame cameras with the newest sensors, one shot might have all the detail you need. So it's best to inspect the brackets beforehand. For this particular case, let's examine the properly exposed bracket. As you can see, as I bring up the shadows, despite the image being shot with a low ISO of just 125, there is a lot of noise in the shadows. Comparing it with the overexposed bracket, which is much better exposed for the shadows, you can see the much higher quality with lower noise in the shadows. Next, let's examine the detail in the highlights. Looking once again at the properly exposed shot, as I bring down the exposure, you can see a lot of detail has been clipped. The color merely turns to gray and no extra detail is recovered. As such, we will need the underexposed bracket to bring back detail in the bright highlights. So that is an example of the analysis you need to do to determine how many brackets you need in the blending. For this case, I think it can be concluded that we need all three brackets to ensure that we get the best dynamic range in the final output. Next, let's begin the blend. I'll start off with a properly exposed bracket. I'll click develop. That brings us back to the photo persona. As you can see, the raw image now appears as a layer. I'll do the same for the rest of the brackets. I'll combine the overly exposed layer with a properly exposed layer. For this, I'll just use Control C and Control V to copy and paste respectively. As you can see, both layers now appear together with the overexposed bracket appearing on top. I'll rename the layers. Next, I'll add a mask. The mask will be used to show the good parts of the top layer while hiding the rest. For this problem, I'll use a compound mask. Within the compound mask, I'll add three more masks as sublayers of the compound mask. One luminosity mask, and two empty masks, which I'll be using to refine the luminosity mask in case the luminosity mask is not perfect. I'll call the first empty mask subtract, because this will be used to remove from the luminosity mask. I'll call the second empty mask add, as this will be used to add to the luminosity mask. Do note that as of now, the two empty masks are not doing anything. Next, let's use the luminosity mask to reveal the shadows in the overexposed bracket while hiding the rest. I'll manipulate the mask to ensure the shadows will be in white while the brighter tones in black.
As you can see, the result is not too great, and that is because the mask is too detailed with too many abrupt transitions between the tones. As mentioned in previous videos, when performing exposure blending, you want masks that have smooth transitions between dark and bright. To fix this, I'll refine the mask. With the Add Mask selected, I'll paint white to smoothen it out. Next, I'll change the operator of the Subtract Mask to Subtract, and this will allow me to remove from the mask. I'll paint white on the shadows to smoothen that area as well. So this is the final compound mask. Notice how much smoother it is than the original. And this is the interim blend with the first two images, the overexposed and properly exposed image. Next, let's blend in the underexposed image. I'll rename the image. To avoid confusion, I'll hide the overexposed layer so we can focus on just two layers. The next steps will be the same as the previous. I'll add the compound mask. I'll add three masks. Once again, I'll manipulate the luminosity mask. This time, I'll make sure that we get a mask with the highlights in black so as to hide it, as the highlights should be coming from the underexposed bracket not the properly exposed bracket. The rest of the mask should be in white. As you can see, the highlights have been recovered. Here is the result without the mask showing just the normally exposed image. And here is the result with the mask. As you can see, a big difference. And here is the final mask. By the way, to view the mask, simply option click on the compound mask. Notice that the highlights are primarily in black as we had planned, while the rest are primarily in white. As this blend looks fine, I'm not going to refine the masks any further. But if you wish to do that, you can just brush on the empty masks as shown in the previous steps. Next, let's unhide the overexposed bracket. And there you go. As you can see, beautiful detail from both the shadows and the highlights are revealed in the final blend. By the way, do note that since these are raw files, you have even more flexibility to recover even more detail with tone adjustments. The highlights are still looking a little bit bright. Let's reduce the exposure in the highlights. With the underexposed layer selected, I'll navigate to Develop Persona. I'll reduce the exposure. As you can see, even more detail and color can be recovered, which improves the image quality even further. Next, let's perform some finishing touches. I'll merge the layers. With the merged image selected, I'll again navigate to Develop Persona. I'll increase the clarity to make the image pop. As you can see, you have now a ton of detail in the final image and with very little noise in the shadows. Here is the before and the after. I hope you can see it is a world of difference. And we had full control over the final blend. So that's how you blend three exposures. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks, Mahmood, for the interesting question. I hope this video was a suitable answer. And let me know if you have any further questions or comments on this technique. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.